Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Let's go back to Isaiah 10. How you get hate out of that? Yeah, how you get hate out of that? <laughs> hate, 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 hate. Everybody Isaiah, got punished. Isaiah like, chapter 10, verse 13. 13. For he saith, by the strength of my hand, I have done it, and by my wisdom. This is what Assyria is saying. Assyria gives God no glory, no honor. Assyria said, uh, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. Done what? Destroyed the Israelites. Go ahead. For I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people. I removed the bounds of the Israelites. I removed them out of their land. Go ahead. And have robbed their treasure. I took their wealth. And I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. I was like a valiant man of war. We de Assyria destroyed Israel. Go ahead. And my hand have found as a nest the riches of the people. I found the nest eggs of the riches of the Israelites, and I took it. Go ahead. And as one gathereth eggs that are left. Mm-hmm. Have I gathered all the earth? And there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. No nation could speak against Assyria. That's what Assyrian king is saying. Go ahead. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? So now the Lord says, shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Meaning you got a man with an axe. Holding the axe, using the axe. The axe can't say, I did this of my own power. Because man is holding it. So likewise, the parable is God is holding Assyria, using the Assyrian Empire to destroy Israel. But yet they were boasting against God. That's what was happening. Read that again. Shall the axe boast itself against him that you would deal with? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? You got a man holding a saw, and he's shaking it and using it to cut down a tree. God says, can a saw... Boast itself against the man that's holding it and using it? God is comparing himself to that man. He's using Assyria as the saw. Go ahead. As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself, as it were no wood. So now this, I'm going to give you the precept for this. Moses prophesied about this thing. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 26 and 27. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26 and 27. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. Watch this. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would scatter the Israelites to the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among I men. I would make you forget you're the Israelites. Watch this. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy? Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, meaning the nations? Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. Lest their adversaries, their enemies, should behave themselves strangely. How so? And lest they should say, our hand is high, and the Lord have not done all this. You see what the enemies would say? Our hand is high, and God had nothing to do with it. That's the same thing Assyria was saying here in Isaiah 10. It's the same thing. The nations say they give God no honor. Because they know that they, the nations know who we are. But they boast themselves against God. Let's go back to Isaiah 10. What Isaiah verse we had 16? 10, verse... Read 15 six, again. 15. Read 15 again. Shall the axe boast itself against him that you with, or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? 
as if the rod should, sh should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as it were no wood. Come on. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness. So the Lord said, I'm going to bring among your fat ones leanness. I mean, I'm going to destroy. Because Assyria, when it says fat, it means wealthy, rich, powerful. So he's saying now in judgment regarding them, therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness. Go ahead. And under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. God said, I'm going to send fire upon Assyria. Go ahead. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. Now right here, the wording goes into the last days. So it's no longer talking so much about Assyria. He's talking about America. And I'm going to show you that. Read that again. Verse 17. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. And his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns. And his briars in one day. You see that? It says he shall be burnt up in one day. Watch this. Get Revelation 18.8. Uh -oh. And this is the problem with Christian scholars. They will read the Bible like a novel. And they may be okay with the history, but when it comes to prophecy, they fall off the horse and cannot see with spiritual eyes. Revelation 18 verse 8. Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. America's plagues, Babylon the Great, their plagues shall come in one day. One day. That's what we just read in Isaiah 10. God said, I'm going to bring fire upon them and destroy them in one day. So here, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Go ahead. Death and mourning and famine. Uh-oh. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. America. Babylon the Great shall be utterly burned with fire. Go ahead. <clears throat> For strong is the Lord God who judges her. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Let's go back. Watch this. Let me give you another one. Isaiah 66 and 15. Here's another one. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. Verse 15. Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. With what? With fire. Come on. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Those are his so-called UFOs. Go ahead. To render his anger with fury. To render his anger with fury. Go ahead. And his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword. For by fire and by his sword. Will the Lord plead with all flesh. He's going to plead with all flesh. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So let's go back to Isaiah 10. And let's read 17 and 18 again. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 17. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire. Mm -hmm. And his holy one for a flame. Mm. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. So his thorns and his briars is his people. His entire system is going to be burnt up in one day. That's what we just read in Revelation 18, verse 8. Go ahead. And shall consume the glory of his forest mm -hmm. and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. Now that's heavy. He said, I'm going to destroy both soul and body. You got to think about this type of fire. That can burn and destroy your soul. The body's easy to understand, but the soul? Let me get that. Give me that in Revelation 14. Let me show you something. Let me show you something about America, and I'm going to show you something about the way we've been miseducated here. Because when we were in Sierra Leone, some of the people there, just like here, made, made statements like, there's no difference between a black Christ or a white Christ. His message is the same. We follow his message. It doesn't matter if he's black. It doesn't matter if he's white. And we respond, Oh, contraire, mon frere. You've been miseducated. Get that, Revelation 14, verse 9. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast. If any man worship the beast, the beast is America. Eat him. Eat him. Go ahead. And his image. And what? And his image. His image is the Edomite image of Christ. So if any man worship the white man, America, and if any man worship his image, that white image of Jesus. 
and receive his mark in his forehead and receive his political policies his religious policies in his heart or in his hand or you support it the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the land. You're going to be destroyed, body and soul, in the presence of the angels and the presence of the Lamb. Go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. For how long? Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Go ahead. And they have no rest day nor night. There will be no rest for your soul day or night. What are we reading? The Bible. Go ahead. Who worship the beast. Who worship the beast. That's America, that white man. And his image. And that white image of Jesus. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. His policies. So the Bible says you will have no rest day or night. That's about your soul. You're going to be tormented. So it's wrong for our people. We got to get that thought out of their head. It doesn't matter if he's black or white. That's wrong. That's wrong. Everybody understand that? Let's go back to Isaiah 10. And we're in verse 18, I think. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 18. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainted. It's like you're in a war. And the standard bearer, bearer has your flag. And he only drops that flag when his army is destroyed. Go ahead. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few. That a child may write them. The fire is going to consume so much, only thing left is going to be enough for kids to be able to number. You know, a kid's mathematics is very low because he's a child. So that's how a few trees are going to be left. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day mm -hmm. that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. Now that's what we wanted to get to. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped. Of the house of Jacob. Now I want you all to think back about the Assyrian Empire. Who came after the Assyrian Empire? Who knows? Only one. A, 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 a Malachi. Only two brothers know who came after Assyria here. Uh, Amaziah. Only two brothers know who came after Assyria. Y'all don't, don't know? Oh, let me ask more. right there. Obadiah. Who came after Assyria? <coughs> Very good. You said like a question, but I'm going to give you grace. Babylon. <laughs> Babylon. Were the Israelites escaped? No, they were not. Because Babylon conquered Assyria and took the northern kingdom in captivity, and Babylon conquered the southern kingdom. Took us all 12 tribes into captivity. So now let's look at this then. Verse 20 again, Amaziah. Look at verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. Shall no more again stay upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. So I want you all to think about this now. From Assyria, we went into Babylonian captivity. So this whole chapter is talking about Assyria. Somehow, some way, it's talking about us being escaped and serving the Lord in truth as a nation. That didn't happen after Assyria. So this is going into the last days. That's why it took us from verse uh, 16 down going into America. Okay. Read verse 20 again. Verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. Stop. Let's talk about those that are escaped of the house of Jacob. Watch this. Isaiah 4. Verse 3 is the point, but I like verse 1 so much, it makes my teeth white. Sisters get mad at it. They roll their eyes. You sisters just stay in the spirit. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. right. Let's get a little hand at that. Get a little hand, bro. Oh, oh. It ain't, somebody ain't clapping, bishops. They ain't clapping. The brothers that ain't clapping, their wife is on this side giving them the eye. You ain't getting none tonight. Keep on clapping over there. You ain't getting none. 
Read it again. Read it again. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. That's right. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. This is going to be our reward. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, hey. So the, you was talking earlier about the woman don't want to get a man none. That's okay. You hold your stinky coochie. We're going to get seven women. Damn. One time. <laughs> <laughs> they, they ain't laughing, bitch. They ain't laughing. They look at their laughing. faces. Look at their faces. Look, look, look. <laughs> I'm poisoning his food. Death in the pot. Death in the pot. Kill him. Why didn't that nigga stay in New York? <laughs> Read that. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Oh, suck it, suck it now. When you mean we ain't got to beg for it, we ain't got to do what keeps sweat? Yeah, Not in this it. day. <laughs> Keep sweat is finished. <laughs> Baby face is gone. Why was a little begging Judah used to be singing them beggars? Yeah, I know y'all like that one. They always be joking Judah be begging. Yeah, Judah be begging. But it's going to come a day we ain't got to beg no more. That's what I'm talking. I just love reading that. I read that all day. Just read right there. <laughs> read it again. Read, it again. read verse two. Read verse on. two. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful. Go ahead. And glorious. And glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely. Here for, it comes. For them that are escaped of Israel. That's what Isaiah was talking about. For them that are escaped of Israel. So now this from verse 1. Many brothers today, many Israelites, many black Hebrew Israelites, they like to say that this is today. It's not today. The branch of the Lord is not beautiful today. As long as you still got husbands and wives fighting each other, stabbing each other, cracks being sold on a corner, women prostituting themselves, Hell, you got men prostituting themselves now, especially in Atlanta. What the hell is going on here with that? But the branch of the Lord is not beautiful today. So this prophecy has not come to pass as yet. Okay? We don't? Verse 3. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Right, because a lot of Israelites are going to die. So this is only for the living. From there, we're still talking about those that are escaped of Israel. No. Give me 1 Thessalonians 4.16. We're talking about those that are escaped. Because that's what Isaiah said. Isn't that what he said? For those that are escaped. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Come on. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So this is for them that are escaped. This is how we're going to escape. Go ahead. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So these type of scriptures, Paul said, comfort each other with these words. Now, I always make mention of that part, uh, verse 17, where Paul says in the spirit, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Who is the we include? Who's speaking here? Stand up. You. Give him the mic. This includes Paul. This includes the Apostle Paul. He's telling you about himself prophetically. He says, then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So, yeah, Paul's dead. But he's telling you that in the last days, I'm going to be there. He says, I'll be back. Paul already saw that thing in the spirit. That's why in Corinthians, he said he saw a thing. He went to the third heavens and saw many things that was unlawful for him to utter. That might have gone over some of your heads. So from there, give me Matthew 24, 29. So we're talking about for them that are escaped. Matthew. So what we read in Thessalonians, the churches call that the rapture, which is Latin word, and that word is not in the Bible, but it's the, 
catching away, being caught up. So watch this. Matthew 24, 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. And you know what's heavy about this? What's heavy about this is that when you read from verse, I'm not going to read it today, but from verse 4 down, it talks about the Israelites being colonized, being destroyed in 70 AD, going into captivity, and re miseducated. That's what this is all going into. And then when you get to verse 29, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Most church, I'll say this, all churches love to ignore slavery and colonialism. Sure. They erase it from history when they read the Bible, like it never existed. We don't exist. But that's what it's talking about. Read it again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. When it says the stars shall fall from heaven, the satellites that America and Russia and China have set up, shall fall from heaven. Go ahead. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the powers of the heavens, see it says heavens with an S, meaning the kingdoms of the, of the world shall shake, meaning there's going to be war. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Then shall the twelve tribes of Israel cry. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's what Paul says. And then we which are alive and remain. Go ahead. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. Why from the four winds? Because Israel, like we read in Deuteronomy 32, he said, I would scatter them into corners. Yes, the four corners of the earth. Everybody with me so far? All right, Ezekiel 28 now, verse 25. Ezekiel 28, verse 25 and 26. Everybody goes, yeah, that's everybody's going to be taken. Everybody. Really? Okay. Ezekiel 20. I'm sorry, what did I say? Ezekiel 28? Right, go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 25. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel... From the people among whom they are scattered. Stop! The rapture is not for all nations, brothers and sisters. The Bible's telling you, thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered. We've been scattered here in America. Some of us in England, London, uh, the Caribbean islands, some are in Africa, some are Iran, Iraq. We're going to be gathered from these places, from among the people we've been scattered among. Read that again. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. Come on. And they shall dwell safely therein. And they shall dwell safely therein. Go ahead. And shall build houses. And plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence. Another word for confidence is faith. James said that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Did James say that or was it Paul in Hebrews? I forgot. It's in Hebrews. So Paul said that thing. He said without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that's what he's talking about here. We shall dwell with confidence. Go ahead. When I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. You see that? That's what the nations don't want. They don't want God to execute judgment on them. But they're going to get it. Just like we got it, they're going to get it too. And they're going to get it worse. That's what I'm talking about right there. When I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. Go ahead. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. That's some heavy stuff right there. Let's go back to Isaiah. I think it was verse 20 we were in, if I'm not mistaken. Or was it 18? About it. Verse 20. Verse 20. Read it again. And it shall come to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel 
and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. That's why we went to those precepts. Such as are escaped of the house of Jacob. That's those of us that repent and that are caught up with the Lord. Go ahead. Shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. See that? Shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. What does that mean? Let's get the precept. Isaiah 30, verse 12 to 18. What does it mean that we shall no more again stay upon him that smote us? Today, the white man's smiting us. And how do we stay upon him? Let's see what it says. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. You despise the Bible. And trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. You see that? You see that? That's what it means how we stay upon him that smote us. The white man has manipulated and perverted the ways and words of God. For example, the Lord says man shall not lay down with mankind as with womankind. America says, no, that's a good thing. And if you speak against it, we'll destroy your career. We'll destroy your job. We'll get you fired. We'll humiliate you. We'll embarrass you. That's just for example. So it says here in verse 12, wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, because when the Bible speaks, people say it ain't right. And trust in oppression and perverseness. Anything oppressive and perverse, we say we like that. We want that. Why? Because America pushes those, those doctrines, those philosophies. Use a condom. You're going to have sex. Use a condom. What does that promote, condom use? That promotes fornication. Because you don't need a condom with your spouse. What are you using the condom for? Okay, unless there's... Know, some medical thing. I'm not talking about that. But in general, the use of condom is for fornication. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm just going to do something. One night stands. Okay? LGBT, QRSTUV, WXYZ. <laughs> Oppression. They, they said all black people was dem Democratic at one time. Now it's coming out. No, well, originally you were all Republicans. So now we're going Republican. First we ran to democracy. Yay, democracy. Then they said, no, you were originally de Republican. Then we go, Yay, Republicans. It's all oppression. All oppression. But what about the church? Oppression. Perverseness. Their religions, their politics tilt upon oppression and perverseness. And it says, and stay there on. We love to have it so. We don't Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. See that? Therefore, this iniquity, the staying on of oppression and perverseness, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. It's like we're standing in front of a wall with a big crack in it, and a wall's about to come tumbling down. Go ahead. Swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. When this kingdom falls, the Lord said it's going to come at an instant, suddenly. Go ahead. Verse 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. Mm -hmm. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the hearth or to take water with oil out of the pit. So he's saying, what he's saying in essence is, this kingdom that you trust, you're not going to be able to warm yourself or get any water from this place, because God's going to smash it. Go ahead. Verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. Now I want you to look at that. Sisters get at, uh, so not these holy sisters right here, not them. Sisters in the world get mad when they read something like this, in returning and rest, ye shall be saved. Brothers, too, some get upset about this part. What does it mean in returning? Returning means to repent. Then it says, and rest. Rest ourselves in what? The Bible. Watch the next part. Go ahead. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. Here it comes. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. We didn't want to serve the Lord with quietness and and in confidence, meaning faith. What does it mean, confidence? I mean, quietness. Shut the hell up. Shuff up. 
The Bible's coming out. Well, I, I, I don't agree with that. I think this. I what about? I. <laughs> the Bible says, Damn. "In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength," and you would not. We don't want to be quiet when the Bible's being read. We want to talk. We have some. We know more than our forefathers. We know more than the prophets of old. You're in a condition you have no means of escaping from. God's giving you so the solution, but you can't hear it because you're so busy talking. Don't we see that on the street? Yes, sir. All the time. Yes, sir. Some of the congregations, same things going on. Yes. Blah, 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 I think this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. During class, too. That's what happens. It's our people said we would not. They would not. Read on. Verse 16. But ye said no. What did our people say? But ye said no. Mm -hmm. For we will flee upon horses. We, gonna, we, don't need, we don't need faith in God. We're going to escape on horses. For example, I'll give, I always tell a story. There was an Israelite uh, summit many, 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 many years ago. There was about 3,000. And they were gathering money, collecting money to buy a plane. Ben Ami was there, and I raised my hand, being an annoying young child that I was. I got a question. What do you want? I said, what is the plane for? They said, the plane, young man. You know when they throw that thing, young man. That means you don't know SH. That's what they're saying. <laughs> young man, we're going to escape destruction when it comes. All right? I said, okay. So they continued talking, and then I raised my hand again. What do you want now? Girls, get your hand up. I said, just one more time. One more I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, well, I said, I'm looking around, and there's about 3,000 of us in here. A plane is not going to hold <laughs> 3,000 of us. Oh, they said, let's send up the prayer. They said, God of Abraham, they said, Yahweh, Kill the young people who have so much to say. Kill them, Lord! That's, we were like, we better get the hell out of here. These dudes want to kill us. All I did was ask a question. I, did, I, was, I was confused. So, read that again. Verse, Verse 16. 16. But ye said no. Hey, uh, I want to, while well, Bishop is uh, saying about the be quiet part. We heard there was there is some camp in IUIC. When Bishop Clark is gone, your guys one in your mouth. Your guys stop in the class to bring you on scriptures. That's very very disrespectful. That should not be happening to no no IUIC school. When the class is going, you need Bible, your apocrypha, and paper and pencil. That's it. That's it. We hear, we hear brothers is sleeping. And those are, those are supposed to be the leaders of the camp. Sleeping, we hear sisters wanting their mouth. That should not be happening. You should not be in the back somewhere wanting your mouth. Because we got sisters in the back. We got brothers outside wanting them. No. Your leaders of this camp, you do, none of these things should supposed to be happening. That's very disrespectful. Because we have one of these Negroes who, was, who used to be with us. He used to stop bishop class and bring his, and one his mouth, bring his own scriptures. Where is it today? Gone. That should not be happening. Verse 16. Verse 16. But ye said, no, for we will flee upon horses. We're going to get planes, trains, and automobiles. Go ahead. Therefore shall ye flee. God says, therefore you shall flee. And we will ride upon the swift. And we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. He said, when that destruction comes... That's going to be swift in whatever you're trying to escape with. Go ahead. Verse 17. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. Mm. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain and as an ensign on a hill. So now from verse uh, 16, well, actually from verse uh, 15 to 17, he goes back to Assyria. So when it says you shall be left... Uh, as a beacon upon the top of a mountain and as an ensign, meaning a symbol on a hill, our people being jacked up 
is a symbol of Deuteronomy 28. Write this down, verse 15 through 68. We live in the curses. We are living the curses of Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. We didn't believe God. We never believed him. We never had faith. He says, you're going to be an ensign upon the top of a hill. When people look up and see you, they're going to understand Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 60 based on your life. Go ahead. Verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted. You see this? And therefore will the Lord wait. The Lord said, I'm going to wait and be patient to the end time generations. Go ahead. That he may have mercy upon you. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Blessed are all they that wait for him. What verse you at now? Verse 19. Go ahead. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. Now, you know this ain't talking about back then. Weep no more. We wept from Assyria. We wept from Babylon. We wept. We wept when Persian meat even released us. We wept. We wept when the Greeks came. We wept when Rome came. We weep now under, from Spain to America. So this ain't talking about back then. Read. He will be Read very, again. Verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. Thou shalt weep no more. Give me that precept in Revelation. Where is it? 21? 20. Where is it? 21 and 3. Thank you. Revelations chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the. Which one is it? Verse 4. Revelation 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's what we wanted right there. The, to let you know it's talking about the kingdom. So what I'm showing you based upon Job 11 verse 6 is that many of the scriptures we read have double meaning. Go ahead. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. The former things are captivities. The captivities are going to be passed away, ended, finished. We're coming up to that point now. Let's go back to Isaiah 10. The former things shall be passed away. What verse was that? Uh, we are at verse, let me show this one. Uh, verse, verse, was it 20? We finished verse 20. 21? Verse 20. 21. Isaiah 10, verse 21. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. A remnant of us shall be saved. Go ahead. The shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Now you see that consumption decreed, that's that destruction that is prophesied, shall overflow with righteousness. Watch this. Give me Psalms 91. Watch this. Psalms 91. I love Psalms 91. It's scary and beautiful at the same time. Go ahead. Yep. Psalms chapter 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Stop. The secret place of the Most High is this Bible. I'm going to say it again. The secret place of the Most High is the Bible. Why? Because the understanding of what this Bible is really talking about has been kept secret for ages. Read it again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. The snare of the fowler is revealed, is making reference to traps set up in society. Whether it's religious traps, political traps, drug traps, any type of thing that's meant to occupy you and keep you from the word of God. It's a snare. It's a trap. Go ahead. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. Come on. He shall cover thee with his feathers. So those of us that repent and return to the secret place of the Most High, it says he shall cover thee with his feathers. Go ahead. 
and under his wings shalt thou trust. Come on. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His law shall be thy shield and buckler. Go ahead. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. The arrow that flies by day is the ICBM missile. Let's say that part again. The arrow that flies by day is the ICBM missiles. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Mm -hmm. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. You see, the Bible's prophesying when the major destruction is going to come. Noonday. Noonday. It's telling you right here. Read. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. You gotta ask yourself, what kind of weapon could destroy a thousand at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand? This is nothing but the ICBM nuclear missile, thermonuclear destruction. Read it again. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. That's some scary stuff right there. Watch what it says. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. That goes back with um, Revelation 11. Watch this. When it says, come up hither. You know what I'm talking about? Revelation 11 and 12. We're going to read 12 and 13. Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. Now, remember he said, only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. Watch. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. This is what Christians call the rapture, but it's only for the Israelites. Go ahead. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. A chariot. Go ahead. And their enemies beheld them. Here it comes. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. A great destruction. And the tenth part of of the city fell. It's talking about the, the whole city is going to be destroyed. Go ahead, the whole country. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. Mm -hmm. And the remnant this is were. This what I wanted to get to. Where and you? the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So when we read in Psalms 91, where it says, A thousand shall fall at thy hand and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. We're going to be so, those that are alive, are going to be so frightened in that day. Why? Because you're going to see death all around you in almost an instant. And that heat's going to be coming your way. And you're going to think the Lord has forgotten you and left you behind. He's going to gather you at that last second. And that's why it says we're going to be affrighted and give glory to the God of heaven. I don't know if you, I, I've had dreams about that, where I'm thinking the Lord left me, and I'm like, no! Yes, sir. And then at the last second, you get taken. You, t you are horrified, terrified. Mm -mm. Let's go it. back. <laughs> go back to uh, Isaiah 10. What verse you at? We are at verse 23. Read, go to Ezekiel 20, 35. Ezekiel, this is what I'm going to show you. So now it says we're going to be taken up, caught up, right? Watch this. Pay close attention. Ezekiel 20, verse 35. Pay close attention. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. So I heard a Christian say we're going to live in, up in the sky. I said, no, that's not what the Bible is saying. They'll read Thessalonians, which said, we shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air. I say, and then what? He says, we're going to just stay in the air. So you're an idiot. you got to read precept upon precept. Now, read, watch this. Read what Ezekiel 20, verse 35 says. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. The same wilderness we were at during the time of Moses. God says, we're going to go back there. Go ahead. And there will I plead with you face to face. And there will I plead with you face to face. Go ahead. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. That's the proof. That same wilderness is talking about the same wilderness in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Come on. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Meaning he's going to teach us the law all over again. Go ahead. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. So there's going to be certain men, certain women that the Lord says, I'm going to bring them into the wilderness. Damn. But it's just to kill them. Because they were evil. They were sneakily evil on this side. 
Sure, they, brothers and sisters didn't catch their BS, but the Lord sees it. He said, I'm going to deliver this certain brother here and these certain sisters here just to kill them on the other side because ain't nobody going to escape. Because you're rebellious here, you're going to be rebellious there. Read that again. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. That's the proof. Go ahead. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. See that? He said, I'm going to bring you out of the countries where you sojourn, like here we are in America. He said, I'm going to bring some of you out. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. He said, no, they're not going in. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So once we're in the wilderness, how are we going to get to the land of Israel once we're in the wilderness? Does the Bible talk about that? Yes. Get Isaiah 11. Here's the precept. Isaiah 11, verse 15 and 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 15. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. All that comedic talk, all that talk of oppression, that's really what is going into. The Lord said, I'm going to destroy that talk. Go ahead. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. And with his mighty hand will he shake his hand. What does it say? And with his mighty wind, I'm sorry, will he shake his hand over the river. Watch this. And shall smite it in the seven streams. He's going to smite the waters in the seven streams. And make men go over dry shod. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So what is he saying here? He's saying he's going to part the rivers once again. And we're going to walk across on dry land. Just like during the time of Moses. Do y'all see what I'm saying here? Everybody yes, understand? <laughs> go ahead. Verse 16. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in, in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. He said it's going to be the same way. He's going to part the rivers. and We're going to walk across into our land on dry land. This is some heavy stuff right there. Let's go back. We're going back to Isaiah 10. Well, you in verse 22, I think. Read 22 again. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. The consumption decreed. So this destruction is a promise. It's a law. Go ahead. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even the determined in the midst of all the land. Mm -hmm. Watch this. That's Zechariah 13 and 8 too. Get that one. This consumption, Zechariah 13 and 8. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Imagine this. Some of the third that's going to be left, God said, I'm going to kill them on the other side. <laughs> and it, I, when I read this, I say, Lord, please don't let me be one of them. I don't want to be one of them. Please, Lord, please. Read on. Verse 9. No, back to Isaiah 10. I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22. Uh, 23. 23. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. So he says, be not afraid of the Assyrians. Now remember, we were just talking about the last days. Now he says, all my people, be not afraid of the Assyrian. It's the same thing with us today. He's saying, be not afraid of America. Babylon the Great, do not be afraid. Go ahead. He shall smite thee with a rod. Sure. Just as Assyria smote us with the rod, he says, America is doing the same thing. That's what the SPLC is about. They put out two articles in one week about us, right? Yes, sir. Oh, they're filled with hatred. Just to sully us so that our people will not repent. That's their plan. Make us look bad in the minds and eyes of the people so that our people will never repent. Read that again. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee. After the manner of Egypt. Just like ancient Egypt did. Just like they did. One of the brothers in North Carolina is going through persecution now. He has one of those public jobs. And 
What the SPLC did, now they're trying to get the brother fired. Oh, he's, with, he's affiliated with a hate group. That's what they're doing. That's why I tell you, those of you who have high-profile jobs, you don't have to be in the forefront. Just go to the back, okay? There's other brothers who can go to the front and not worry about who work for themselves. Let us do that. Y'all come to the school, deal in the schools. Everybody understand what I'm saying? I ain't trying to, I don't want to put fear on nobody, but I'm telling you, the same thing they did with Marcus Garvey, I'll tell you about the UNIA. They looked around, where does he, that's why they always, remember that sister, sister so love, remember her? She was cursing out Don, um, the oh, CNN, oh, Don, Lemon. Don, Don, Lemon. Lemon. Don Lemon. Remember they kept saying to her, where do you work? Yes, yes. Where do you work? What's your name? What's your name? Yeah, yeah. Why? So that they can find out where she works and get her terminated. That's their plan. Hit them in their pockets. That's why it's best to be an entrepreneur if you can. All right? Read on. Verse 25. For yet a very little Wait, while. Did you, 20, did you read 24? Read 24 again. Verse 24. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. Don't be as afraid of these nations. That's what he's saying. He shall smite thee with a rod. He shall smite thee with a rod. And shall lift up his staff against thee. After the manner of Egypt. So he said, we're, going be, we're oppressed. That's what he's saying. He said, don't be afraid just because we're oppressed. Get that in Isaiah 14, 4 through 6. Isaiah 14, 4 through 6 about America. Isaiah 14, 4 through 6. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4. That thou shalt take up this, par this proverb against the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon is United States of America. Go ahead. And say, how have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Yes, America is the oppressor. Yes, they are the golden city, meaning what? They're the most glorious kingdom on earth right now. Go ahead. That's what it's making reference. That's why everybody wants to come here. Go ahead. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked. See that? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked. And the scepter of the rulers. And the scepter of the rulers. Go ahead. He who smote the people in wrath. That part. He who smote the people in wrath. Remember what we read in Isaiah 10. And what verse was it? Verse 24. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. So now in Isaiah 14, it's saying the same thing. But it's being more specific about Babylon. It said, uh, he who smote, verse 6, he who smote the people in wrath with what? With a continual stroke. Meaning he ain't stopping. All these things he set up throughout this system are traps for our people. That's how he's smiting us. Go ahead. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. And when the persecution comes to Babylon, it says nobody's going to be able to stop it. Go ahead. Was that down to 6? Yes, sir. Okay, get me First Ezra 5. I want to show you uh, uh, another way they're smiting us. You know this one, First Ezra 572, about the secret yes, plots. The book of First Ezra, chapter 5, verse 72. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight, hindered their building. They want to hinder our building, the 12 tribes of Israel. They want to hinder us. Traveling to these places to build up the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. And by their secret plots. Their secret plots. Anything that happens with any one of you members, they don't blame the individual. They say the organization, the nation builders, they're the ones behind that. They're the responsible ones. To, what, to sully our reputation in the eyes of our people. So that our people will not repent. That's what it means. And by their secret plots. Uh, uh, first in the forefront, you got the SPLC followed by the FBI. We see it, but there's nothing we can do to stop it. Go ahead. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions. Popular persuasions. And commotions. And commotions of the people. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. They hindered the building. They hindered what? How did it go? They hindered the... Of the they hindered the finishing of the building. They hindered the finishing of the building. you got to understand this one thing, that we are a spiritual house. Where's that in the book of Peter? Y'all know where that is? Find me that. Yeah, First Peter 2? Find me that. Yeah, 
Because you'll read that and go, oh, it's just talking about the actual building back then. No, 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 no. Remember Job 11, 6. It says his words of wisdom are double in meaning. You found it? Yes, sir. Where are we going? First Peter 2 and 5. Go ahead. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. You see that? We are a spiritual house. So when it says they hindered the finishing of the building... Now we can look at that with spiritual eyes and see what they're trying to do. See, in Christianity, they, they, they teach you to read the Bible like a novel with one layer. No, we got to read it with double vision. Spiritual eyes and our earthly eyes. We got to see what's behind the meaning. Everybody understand that? Let's go back to Isaiah 10, 25. We're almost finished. The book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 25. For yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. What verse was that? Verse 25. Go ahead. Verse 26. And the well, Lord. Of give me Isaiah 54 and 4 as a precept for that. The book of Isaiah. He said, for yet a little, a very little, for yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease. And mine anger in their destruction. Read Isaiah 54. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. So the Lord's message to all of us is fear not. You shall not be ashamed. If the curses in Deuteronomy 28 came to pass, then you better believe the blessings will surely come. Everybody understand that? Read that again. Fear not. Fear not. Go ahead. For thou shalt not be ashamed. The prophet promises we shall not be ashamed. Go ahead. Neither be thou confounded. Don't be confounded. Don't be confused. Go ahead. For thou shalt not be put to shame. The Bible says we shall not be put to shame. Go ahead. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. We're going to forget the shame of our youth like when we was in Egypt. We're going to forget the shame of our youth under Assyria and Babylon and Greece and Rome. We're going to forget the shame of our youth. Go ahead. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. We're not going to remember the reproach when God cut us off from being his wife. Because we were his wife. Yes, and another scripture says, I married to you, O children of Israel. That's what it means. It says, we shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Go ahead. Verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. That's the evidence right there. He had cut us off. We became a widow. Now it's saying, for thy maker is thine husband. That's what Christ was coming was all about. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. we're going to subdue all nations and make them worship the most high. Go ahead. For the Lord have called thee as a woman forsaken. We were like a woman. The nation of Israel was like a woman forsaken, but God's calling us. Go ahead. And grieved in the spirit. And grieved in spirit. And a wife of youth, uh -huh. when thou wast refused, saith thy God. Go ahead. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. He says, for a small moment have I forsaken thee. We've been here 400 years, and he's calling this a small moment. Yes, sir. You got to think about it. From se Actually, from 70 AD till now. That's a, to us, it seems like forever. He says, a small moment have I forsaken thee. Go ahead. But with great mercies will I gather thee. But with great mercies will I gather thee. Go ahead. In a little, in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee. He says thee. this was a little wrath. He said, I'm just mad a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> it's, and, wow. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee. Go ahead. For a moment. For a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Go ahead. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. He says, this, what we're going to go through, is like the waters of Noah. Go ahead. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, uh -huh. so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. So he said, he's the same way he made that promise to Noah not to destroy the earth with water anymore, he said, I'll make a promise. I'm not going to be mad with you Israelites no more. Wow, this is some beautiful stuff there. Go ahead. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. That means the nations, the kingdoms. Go ahead. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Go ahead. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed 
saith the Lord that have mercy on thee. Oh, praises. Let's go back to Isaiah 10. We're almost done. We had verse 26 now. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 26. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian. So when Gideon destroyed Midian, he said, I'm going to raise up, raise up men against them and slaughter them the same way. Go ahead. At the rock of Oreb, and as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And like when Moses lifted up his rod. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. So the Lord said he's going to lift the burden from off our shoulder. This, he's talking about here in his last days. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. Go ahead. And his yoke from off thy neck. And his yoke from off thy neck. Go ahead. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. See that? And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing is Christ, like it says in Daniel 9.24. Real quick, I'm sure that what the anointing is. Watch this. So we're going to go to Daniel 9.24, 1 John 2, and Isaiah 14. Yes, sir. I just had to say it because I forget in a second. You're going to remember for me. Go ahead. I'll try. <laughs> Daniel 9, verse 24. We're going explaining the anointing. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of prophecy and to anoint the most holy. To anoint the most holy is Christ. He is the most holy that was anointed first and foremost. Now watch this, 1 John 2, 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him. See that? But the anointing which ye have received of him of the Lord. Abideth in you. Abideth in you. Go ahead. And ye need not that any man teach you. and teach you, But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it had taught you. Ye shall abide in him. So when you come in his truth and repent, the anointing begins to come upon you. And it takes time. It does not take a day. It does not take two weeks or even a year. Remember, the disciples walked with the Son of God for about three years. And it wasn't until after that that they got the anointing. So likewise, if that was with Christ walking with them, it's going to be a little longer with us here in his truth before that anointing starts to kick in. That comes through trial and error. Studying, praying, applying. And after some time, the anointing kicks in. And you'll be able to open a book and explain both, both on the surface and in a spiritual context what the verses are saying, what the Bible is really saying. That takes time. Let's go back. Oh, you, and what was the other thing I said? Isaiah 14. About, remember he said he's going to take the burden from off our yoke of our neck, break the yoke, something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Isaiah 14, 1 and 2 to 3. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Mm -hmm. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We shall rule over our oppressors. That's what he means. He's going to break the yoke from off our neck. Was that it? No, sir. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. And from the hard bondage. That hard bondage is what Isaiah said in verse 10, chapter 10, about that yoke being on us, that heavy yoke. Go ahead. Wherein thou was made to serve. Wherein we were made to serve. All right, let's go back. In verse 26, right? 26. Yeah. Isaiah 10, verse 26. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 26. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. Mm -hmm. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away 
from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. See that? So the yoke of bond is going to be broken off of us because of the anointing. The anointing begins with Christ giving that anointing to us. And that anointing translates to the Israelites studying, praying, and applying what is written. That, that A, that applying is very difficult for men and women for some reason. Okay? So, so in conclusion, in conclusion, America reflects ancient Assyria. Isaiah 10.24 said, if, I want you to remember this. Isaiah 10, 24. We read it, but I want you to remember this verse. Something is said that's very heavy. Read. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 24. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. Stop. Read that part again. Be not afraid of the Assyrians. Be not afraid. Brothers and sisters, be not afraid. Many things are going to come our way, but be not afraid. These things must come to pass for us to inherit eternal life. Things must come to pass. We must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom. There's no other way. We must go through it, men and women alike. Remember this last verse here, Isaiah 59, verse 19. Isaiah 59, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. We're in the west right now. This is the western hemisphere. We are fearing the name of the Lord. His name is the word of God. Go ahead. And his glory from the rising of the sun. His glory from the rising of the sun is the east. That's where we're over there teaching, in the eastern hemisphere. Go ahead. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. So he's prophesying the enemy is going to come against us. Why? Because the greatest nation on earth is resurrecting now. That's right. Understand that thing. Go ahead. The spirit of when the end, Lord. Read it again. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against so him. So the Lord says, when the enemy comes against you, don't worry, don't fear. He says, I'm going to lift up a standard against them. Read that next verse. Check this thing out. Verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. He's saying the Redeemer, that's Christ. He's going to come to Zion. Go ahead. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Let's get a Lord an amen and give him a hand clap for that thing. <laughs> amen for that. So don't fear, Israel. Don't fear. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth